Greetings all, Miss Robinson here, and we are continuing our read of What Was Hurricane Katrina? by Robin Kuntz. Super awesome illustrations by John Hinderlitter. Uh, when we left off, Hurricane Katrina had become a Category 5 hurricane, which was the most severe kind and was heading right for New Orleans. New Orleans is located in a small area between the Mississippi River, the Gulf of Mexico, and Lake Pontchartrain. Lake Pontchartrain connects to the Gulf of Mexico. Let's see here. Got Mississippi River, Lake Pontchartrain, New Orleans, Gulf of Mexico. Lots of water. Native Americans first settled the area. They lived on a delta that was formed by the Mississippi River. Deltas are triangle-shaped landforms created from soil deposits from surrounding water. This delta's location was a perfect place for a city to grow. The locals traded with people who traveled between the Mississippi River and Lake Pontchartrain. France claimed the area in the 1680s. The city of New Orleans was soon formed and became the capital of French Louisiana. When the Spanish acquired the territory in 1763, they designed buildings that used native brick and tile roofs, some of which can still be seen today. New Orleans has always been home to many different peoples. Besides Native Americans and the French and Spanish, people from Caribbean islands such as Haiti arrived. So did slaves from West Africa, some of whom were able to buy freedom in New Orleans. After Thomas Jefferson bought Louisiana from France in 1803, the area became part of the United States. Yet the different cultures in New Orleans remained strong. Because of this, New Orleans is one of the most interesting cities in the United States. Its diverse history is celebrated. Thomas Jefferson. Sorry. Its diverse his history is celebrated and it's responsible for the area's great music, spicy cooking, dialects, which are different ways of speaking, and religious festivals. Let the good times roll is the motto of the city, which is also called the Big Easy. Let's see, this is Jackson Square. Lots of music, lots of celebration. New Orleans is a great city, but also a city with a lot of poverty. It is divided up into neighborhoods called wards. There are 17 wards altogether, some located on high ground and others on low ground. The richest neighborhoods, such as the Garden District, are on higher ground, while the poorer neighborhoods are on low ground. In 2004, more than two-thirds of the population of New Orleans was black. Middle-class African Americans tended to live in the eastern half of the city. The poorest African Americans live mostly near swampy marshlands or, like people in the Ninth Ward, along the riverfront. Here we see the Garden District, which would be on higher land. And then down here, we see the Lower Ninth Ward. Lower Ninth Ward actually lay about four feet below sea level. In a superstorm, that meant the Lower Ninth would get flooded. Over the years, there was flooding from many hurricanes in New Orleans, but when Hurricane Betsy slammed the Gulf in 1965 and sent floodwaters smashing through levees all around the city, it was a wake-up call. It became evident that more needed to be done to protect New Orleans. So government money helped pay for a better levee system. The Army Corps of Engineers set out to build a levee system that would withstand a serious flood. Stronger, taller levees were built, and old systems were repaired or improved. The goal was to help protect New Orleans from another storm like Hurricane Betsy. So they are working. Unfortunately, new problems arose. The new levees and dams held back dirt from the wetlands. Wetlands are places where water covers the soil. This made it easier for water to surge into the city during a big storm and Katrina prom promised to be the biggest of the big. 
chapter three. Too little, too late. And the cars for the evacuation. After the order from the mayor, about 1.2 million people from New Orleans area left. Thousands more had already gone days before the storm was due to land. They left their homes and possessions behind. They fled the city in their cars. Others escaped using city buses, some of it provided by the government. By, by Saturday, highways were set up for one-way traffic out. Rows of cars and buses were bumper to bumper in all the highway lanes. It was a slow process. A lot of people had come to visit for the Labor Day holiday weekend. Now vehicles streamed out of the city all day and all night. About 80% of the 484,000 people living in the center of the city managed to get out. Earlier, there were mandatory evacuation orders in the low-lying coastal parishes and metropolitan New Orleans and surrounding areas. There were also orders from local governments in Alabama and Mississippi telling everyone living in low-lying areas to move to higher ground and into shelters. Thanks to the orders in those areas, there were fewer people left behind to face Hurricane Katrina. But unfortunately, 100,000 people remain behind even after the order to leave. Why didn't everyone in New Orleans get out? There were lots of reasons. Many had not heard the terrible news. The early winds and rain had knocked out power. So many residents had no TV, radio, or telephone to warn them of the danger. Some chose to stay, despite the order to leave. They had survived other storms and thought they could do so again. Others wanted to protect their property. In the past, they had left only to return to homes that were damaged and burglarized. So I see some people preparing their property for the storm. Some people didn't want to leave their pets behind. Others stayed because they had to care for loved ones who could not be moved safely. For thousands and thousands of others, however, there was no choice. They had to stay because they had no way to leave. When Katrina hit, about a quarter of the people of New Orleans lived in poverty. They had no car or no money to fill up their car with gas. Being prepared for a superstorm meant stocking up on supplies like food and medicine. However, many didn't have the money to do that. A lot of people lived on fixed incomes and their monthly funds were already spent by the time the hurricane arrived. So again, this was later in the month, the 22nd, 25th threat. You received bus stop with bus services canceled. As for public transportation, by Sunday, buses and trains had been canceled. The airport had been closed as the hurricane winds got closer. Hedy Jones, Hedy Johns, a New Orleans resident, told a news reporter, I know they're saying get out of town, but I don't have any way to get out. People with special needs, like the elderly in wheelchairs, for example, found themselves in even greater danger. The city decided to move them to local shelters to wait out the storm. Often, their caregivers stayed by their side. By Sunday evening, Katrina loomed even closer to the city as it whipped north through the Gulf of Mexico. The Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA, had sent supplies to shelters in other locations in the Gulf Coast states in advance of the storm. Supplies included truckloads of water, ice, and meals ready to eat, called MREs. Several other emergency response agencies set up medical teams with supplies and equipment. Here's our FEMA workers getting supplies. Unfortunately, all that was all that was done was not nearly enough. By Sunday afternoon, it was too late to leave the city. The Louisiana Superdome, where football games were played, was turned into a shelter. But it was called a shelter of last resort. That meant people should go there only if they had no other safe place. At first, the Superdome was intended just for people with special needs, but thousands of people showed up. There were over 10,000 people in the dome by late Sunday evening. Katrina was due to strike the city early on Monday morning. Here's the Superdome. FEMA. Learn a little bit more about FEMA. 
The Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, was formed in 1979. It combined earlier disaster relief agencies. Its job is to deal with natural disasters such as hurricanes or earthquakes, as well as man-made disasters such as the terrorist attacks on September 11, 2001. FEMA helps local and state agencies with disasters in their areas. It contributes funds for rebuilding. FEMA also provides low interest loans so people can rebuild a destroyed home or buy a new one. But in the days, weeks, and months after Hurricane Katrina, FEMA was widely criticized for its slow response to the storm. In 2006, the U.S. Congress passed the Post-Katrina Emergency Management Reform Act. It created leadership positions and position requirements, set out new laws, and enhanced FEMA's responsibility. All right, guys, when we continue next time, we'll be on Chapter 4, When the Storm Hits. Until then, Ms. Robinson misses you. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay kind.